So many, I tend to have very strong views about certain issues which sometimes contradict what uh, other people hold dear. So let me start by apologizing to anybody who might feel offended by some of the things I'm about to say. So, someone who is studying biology without theory is like a soldier who is pursuing a robber while, while being blindfolded. Unfortunately, this is traditionally how biology has been studied. In contrast to physics, where you, could, you can learn important aspects of uh, rea reality, you can learn, you can acquire, develop knowledge about how uh, reality is. In biology, uh, experiment and observation have traditionally been required in order to learn about biological reality. And this limited role that theory has played, is, being, is playing in biology, uh, restricts us in our quest to understand and use biology to improve the condition of humans and other organisms. I'll give you an example uh, which concerns uh, a, a phenomenon called the original antigenic scene to show you how theory can help us to better understand biology. This phenomenon in print, it was discovered uh, in 1947 by an eminent American epidemiologist. And uh, in a nutshell, it's a phenomenon whereby you're infected by two pathogens that are related to each other. And instead of your body fighting the second pathogen, it focuses more on the first one, and that opens you up to developing a severe disease. Now, even though it was uh, discovered about 70 years ago, very limited progress was made towards understanding the causes of original antigenic sin until theoretical scientists, mostly from computer science and physics, theoretical physics, started studying this phenomenon. Now, about four years ago, a paper was published in a leading scientific journal which revealed huge gaps in our understanding of the causes of original antigenic sin. In a nutshell, that paper showed that when mice were given certain substances that normally strengthen the immune system, that strengthen your body's ability to fight pathogens, these mice became immune, became free from original antigenic sin. But the reasons for this were mysterious. Now, pondering over uh, these, uh, uh, the, the results of this, pausing results of this paper, it occurred to me that the key to understanding the causes of original antigenic sin lies in a particular type of white blood cells that put brakes on your immune system and slows, uh, slow down its ability uh, to fight uh, pathogens. I realized that in the situations where original antigenic sin occurs, the brakes go on even before the immune system has the, the chance to defeat the pathogen. So these insights, this mechanism came about from a thought experiment which was made possible by mathematical thinking. Now I had a candidate mechani mechanistic explanation and I wanted to make sure that it made sense. So my arguments were logically consistent and they were also deductively valid. And what, do I tend, what did I tend to? I tend to mathematics. And I encoded the mechanism in a mathematical model which allowed me to show in a quantitative way that the predictions of the, the model, the implications of the mechanism, were actually in agreement with reality. Now, what can we do with a model like this? <clears throat> in principle, we can use it to predict whether a particular individual who is sequentially exposed to any pair of pathogens will suffer from the effects of ori original antigenic sin, depending on how related those two pathogens are. We could also use it to design better vaccines. This is just one example of a number of mechanisms that my work, my theoretical work has revealed and which have encoded in mathematical models and then shown later that the mechanisms are in agreement with real data. In doing this work, my goal is to help to transform immunology from what it currently is, which is a largely experimental science, into a science in which both theory and experiment are equally important. These kind of theoretical frameworks, developing, discovering mechanisms, 
and encoding them in models that will make experiments less necessary that will allow us to learn a lot more about biological reality without having to do experiments would take us closer uh, to this goal. They would help us to remove the blindfold with which we, uh, that prevent us from seeing bio uh, biological systems the way they really are. And even more importantly, they will provide us with lenses that would magnify biological reality, allowing us to see things that would be impossible without the use of mathematics. All this work, I hope, will take me even closer to, uh, will take me closer to a much larger goal, which is to develop a quantitative theory of health. <clears throat> what does it mean to be healthy? I've not come across any definition of health that makes sense to me. I want to be able to tell you that you have X units of health and tell you also what you can do to increase your units of health so that you can become healthier. This is the thing, the kind of future, the kind of wonderful future that I'm working to get us all closer to. Thank you very much for listening.